Hey, what's going on everybody? It is Nick here, back with a brand new video. I hope that you guys are all having a beautiful day today. It is a Monday, so we already know what's happening in crypto. We're kind of just sitting stable here for the most part. Um, you guys could actually see on my screen that I have Hedera Hashgraph's roadmap open, and the reason for this is because I do want to do a little bit of a deep dive into this, but before we jump into it, I do want to talk to you guys a little bit about Bitcoin, uh, so please stay tuned for this overall. Uh, but before before we get into everything, I do just want to say if you guys are enjoying the daily uploads, uh, I know that I missed a day yesterday. I took a little bit of a day to myself. Um, I pretty much grinded out like over six videos in one day. So I figured, hey, you know what? We got to take a day off. Um, I, I had to catch up on sleep, guys. It, it, it was rough. Uh, but for the most part, we are back and we are better than ever so if you guys do enjoy the daily uploads definitely leave a like subscribe and turn notifications on if you guys are new here as well uh, so let's jump into it right so Bitcoin right now currently we are sitting at 35,400 uh, like I said you know right now we're kind of like just sitting in a stale choppy zone uh, you know I, I wish that we could kind of just get this over with and be on our way but like I said, this is going to take some time. I mentioned it multiple times that, you know, this isn't just a, hey, look at we correct it. Now it's time to go to $100,000 or whatever the case may be for Bitcoin, which I don't think that we're going to see $100,000 for Bitcoin. Uh, just my overall opinion. Uh, I think the topping point for Bitcoin is about that 75 to 85K. Uh, I, I just think Bitcoin looks extremely weak at these points. And, you know, when this happened in 2017 as well, like when Bitcoin was looking weak, a lot of the Bitcoin money flowed into altcoins, and that's when you know we did see some parabolic rises. Now, in my opinion, you know we always talk about Bitcoin as it's being like the main, you know, wing for all alts to kind of ride on, and you know that is the case. You know, a lot of a lot of alts, including HBAR, right? If we come over here to HBAR, it's sitting stable at about 21.8. Um, you know, it is what it is. We're kind of riding that support zone. Uh, you know, if we break below it, yeah, we do go a little bit lower, but it's not too much low, right? Because, you know, we could argue that this entire bar here is our main support bar, which is at that 20 uh, cent mark. Now, in my opinion, you know, we are going to be trading in chop. It is what it is. Uh, you know, we're not going to pump to $100 tomorrow. We're not going to pump to, you know, a dollar, you know, today. It, the thing is, it's just this is all a patience game right now. You know, we know what we are pretty much waiting for. Uh, we're waiting for Bitcoin to stabilize, find some support at some sort of level here. Because, you know, right now it still looks like we could come down to $30,000, retest that low. And, you know, if we don't if we don't find support at 30 k we could definitely see 28 k like I mentioned on Twitter. Uh, a lot of people are calling for 20 k as the death cross sort of thing. And, you know, in my opinion, yeah we could see uh, 20k it's it's not impossible right it, like I mentioned that 20k mark I even have it down here labeled it's this 19,500 level uh, the reason why I do have that labeled is that's before the pre parabolic pump yeah we built up some you know stability there but this is where we have seen some mass volume coming in. This is pretty much pre pump. This is like a corrective state to test that major low, get that out of the way. And then we go off. Now, a lot of people are saying, well, isn't alt season kind of done once we test? Absolutely not. Um, listen, it, it, it would be, it would be rude for me to say that things look bullish right now. Right? Cause things are not bullish. You know, we're not seeing us make 25% overnight or 50% overnight or a hundred percent overnight. Uh, yeah, sure. Some alts, you know, meme coins and stuff are pumping pretty hard, but right now things are looking bearish, right? H bar looks horrible. I will completely admit with you guys, like I'm not, I'm, I'm not on here to spew nonsense and spew hopium, right? Things just don't look that good right now. But I just want to say, you know, right now is the time to, you know, be averaging in or, you know, even averaging out, right? For some people, it's not too bad to average out to look for a lower buys, right? Because we always sell resistance. This was resistance here. This was resistance here. You know, we see resistance a lot of the times on a lot of these alts. That's where, you know, yeah, we could kind of sell, look for a little bit of a lower buy-in and kind of average that along the way, right? Because... 
I always mention, and I even mentioned in my live stream, you know, selling resistance and buying support is never a bad thing. If you are, and I should say right now, I should stress that if you are, you know, a veteran or if you are at least above average in terms of a trader and you know how to work the market a little bit, then yeah, it's a good idea. But if you guys are new and if you guys are just getting into crypto, just don't try to sell and buy lower and stuff if you are not overall experienced, right? Because it takes experience to really try to do that uh, correctly. Uh, but we are looking for a lot of things in terms of HBAR. We're looking for a lot of things in Bitcoin as well. Uh, it's just going to take time. You know, I mentioned the 18th of June and so far, yeah, we still have quite a bit of time. We have about 11 days. Uh, I think 11 days is a, a total you know, good amount of time to really get back into, you know, where we should be. Now, I'm not going to say by the 18th of June, you know, Bitcoin's going to be up at 50K or anything. I'm just going to say that we should have already have built our support grounds. We should have found our foundation and we should be on our way to do some building up to those new all-time highs and stuff. Uh, now, like I said, a few things for HBAR to really look at. I'm looking to reclaim this zone here. Um... You know, this is where we need to get back to, right? This is pretty much pre-falling uh, where we were about to pump up uh, zones, right? Because even this, you know, 23 and a half cent mark is technically where we were at before this major fall down to 15 cents. So to really reclaim this zone really puts us back on the road. Uh, again, we did hit some resistance there. This is pretty much where Bitcoin was ranging to go to 40K. We already know what happened. Uh, you know, I'm not going to blame it on Elon, right? We're not going to blame Bitcoin falling on one person because one person does not control this game. At the end of the day, you know, Bitcoin, these markets are not moved by one individual. They are moved by many people. Uh, the markets don't move by themselves. So that's why when everybody is like kind of confused on, hey, well, how could this asset move when nobody's really buying it? But the idea of it is everything moves with Bitcoin. Bitcoin is manipulated at the end of the day. Uh, it is moved by multiple whales, not just one. So <laughs> Elon Musk moving the market is just hysterical. It's funny to even think about it, but that's not the way it is. But this was us pretty much ranging to go a little bit higher, but we failed to break out. We knew that, you know, what was happening next was us coming down. So uh, it couldn't find support at these two levels. So we came down and pretty much retested that support zone that I did have mentioned here, which was that 21 or so cent level. Uh, so we really just got to watch PA play out there. We also have to watch PA play out on Bitcoin because right now Bitcoin is looking extremely weak. We are at crucial levels. 35k if it's broken and we go below it uh, we could retest 33.5k if 33.5k is not held then we will see the retest of that major low back here so uh, yeah we really got to watch for that but on to what I was talking about uh, first and foremost uh, I do just want to do another shout out for uh, Barbarian Coinman the H Barbarian on Twitter if you guys do follow him definitely Definitely do follow him. Just if you guys are in H bar, follow him. Uh, but the reason why I am talking about this is uh, he he mentioned this tweet. He quoted this tweet, I should say, uh, and this is about Bitcoin falling from the number one spot uh, to who knows where, right? Because uh, we we talked about this for many times before. Uh, he's talking about DLT as a whole is still in its infancy, and it is. If you guys don't know what DLT means, it's basically a distributed ledger technology. Uh, this is pretty much what you guys see when you look at like the XRP ledger or just like the public network for HBAR itself uh, overall. But you know, right now uh, we are seeing something kind of unfold in this world of crypto, where you know people are talking about Bitcoin kind of falling from the number one spot, a and it does make sense and i know a lot of people will say well bitcoin will never fall from the number one spot it's like for example like you have people like michael saylor who are gonna say it's the best best crypto it's the best crypto it, it does so much and you know they don't really have an answer for what it really does um we've seen that with the miami conference where you know you have people saying yeah it's changing governments and, and we just to even say that is I would say it's disrespectful to most altcoins in this space because Bitcoin does absolutely nothing uh, besides just hold value. I mean, it's basically just 
the digital equivalent of gold, like I mentioned multiple times when I was talking about Bitcoin Cash being the digital equivalent of cash. And that is exactly my point with Bitcoin is at the end of the day, it ha it holds no real use case value. So uh, for it to be the number one spot over a lot of these assets that do have true utility, it's funny to me. That's why when I mentioned like XRP could easily flip Bitcoin in terms of market cap, that's why I said HBAR could as well. You know, people laugh and that's totally fine. People could laugh all day. Listen, when you look at this market, when you do your research and when you're not listening to Hopium Moon Boys and stuff and you know what you hold, then you could really see the true value. When you're blinded and distracted by all these people uh, spewing nonsense all the time on Twitter, because I see it day in and day out, it's just funny to me. It's comical because being distracted by stuff like that will only allow you to not see what's on the other side of the picture. And that is, at the end of the day, utility will reign supreme in this game. And HBAR, XRP, you know, Alliance Block, a lot of these assets out here that we could get for under a dollar, they hold their value more than Bitcoin will ever hold its value. And when I say that is, you know, long-term game, yeah, Bitcoin will make newer highs. It will continue to do so. But when something like HBAR or XRP is utilized on a mass scale, you could easily flip a dollar into $10. And when we look at that on an actual aspect of like putting a thousand dollars in, yeah, it moves very quick. And to hold something like HBAR or XRP and not feel comfortable with it, I just don't understand why, right? Because you, it, once you do the research on it, you would understand what you hold and why it is so undervalued at current levels. But let's read into this uh, tweet. So unpopular opinion, Bitcoin falling from number one would be one of the most bullish things to ever happen to crypto. Definitely will. Um, but sir, the threatened Maxi says Bitcoin falling from number one would mean Lindy isn't a thing. This means nothing can hold value. What you're really saying with that argument is so many people have bought into that. Uh, we can't have everyone lose. This is the definition of sunk cost mentality. Aren't we trying to get rid of too big to fail institutions? Uh, the reality is that Bitcoin is digital gold, is that it is just as useless in a world of smart contracts. What we need is there, or what need is there for pet rock, sorry. And that's what I was trying to say, you know. At the end of the day, Bitcoin has no true value to it besides it being digital gold. That's the number one thing, that's the number one argument any Bitcoin maxi will ever say. Well, it just continues, goes up, right? It doesn't matter if something goes up in value every year or every four years, whatever the case may be. At the end of the day, once we get separation from Bitcoin's dominance and once Bitcoin dominance never comes back, because at some point in time that will happen. Once that happens, Bitcoin will just be as useless as gold. And I know that a lot of people will hate me for saying that, but at the end of the day, that is why we invest in real utility. That's why we are invested in HBAR. That's why we are invested in XRP. That's why we're invested in a lot of these assets that hold supreme utility over all of other assets, right? I mean, even if we look at Ethereum, Ethereum is so dated. And, it, and Ethereum 2.0, they can make the argument that Ethereum 2.0 is going to change the game. At the end of the day, it's outdated technology. You know, they had years to make it. They had years to improve it. They just failed to do so on, you know, time, right? Uh, they're saying by the end of 2022. That's why I have this roadmap open up here, right? Because if we come down here, this is pretty much uh, 2022. Um, we see sharding is going to be making its way into the mainnet. I talked about sharding so many times. Um, this is pretty much going to bring unlimited scalability to Hedera. Once this is implemented, you're going to want to be holding HBAR. And the reason why I say this is because to have something achieve unlimited transactions per second, it's going to scale at such a massive pace. I mean, right now we're even seeing a scale, but we're not seeing the price scale with it. And that's totally fine. I, I don't mind holding something that's not moving in price when I see the work being put in. A lot of people grow impatient, not seeing something move. Me, on the other hand, I just look at it as an opportunity to buy more. You know, HBAR, for me, I don't care if I'm down three, four cents on my buy, whatever. 
Um, you know, I, I, I accumulated at low levels. I accumulated under five cents, under four cents, under three cents. I was buying back in January, and I continue to buy to now, right? I'm, I'm still buying at 22 cents, 23 cents. I even bought, and I will be completely honest with you, like I said, I'm not here to lie to your faces. I'm not here to be the perfect trader. I am not a perfect trader at all. I will completely be honest with you. We all make mistakes. I bought in at 30 cents as well. You know, I was buying from 30 cents down. Yeah, I'm down on some of my investments. I don't care though. At the end of the day, I know what I hold. I know that Hedera Hashgraph is supreme technology over any blockchain technology out there. We know when we compare it to XRP, a lot of people, you know, they just don't understand it. Listen, XRP does have technology that is ahead of Hedera, but at the end of the day, you can't compare the two because they're completely diverse use case values. Hedera is not trying to be cross-border payments in terms of CBDCs. Hedera is going to help scale CBDCs to work efficiently. And at the end of the day, yeah, XRP will still be the bridge asset. It will still bridge the CBDCs, and that's totally fine. But we also talked about, you know, Alliance Block basically helping those CBDCs get regulatory clarity over the ODL, you know, uh, servers and stuff like that. So for the most part, you know, we can't compare Hedera to XRP, uh, but we do know that what they are doing is massive on a huge scale that we haven't even looked at before uh, because when we're talking about unlimited transactions per second at a mass scalability with the governing council that it has I could definitely see Hedera being a household name long term definitely and I could see it reaching a hundred dollars it, it's it's not impossible at the end of the day um, but yeah I mean if we look back here and we see maybe we will maybe we won't but we should be curing value to something that produces value not something that everyone just happens to be so deep in that it's scary to think about them all losing and that's exactly my point overall with a lot of these assets that you invest in right you know for me personally alliance block is going to hold value for such a long time just because of what it does xrp same reason hedera tell xdc a lot of these assets that i hold a ton of and, and I just invest heavily all the time uh, because I know what at the end of the day I know what's gonna happen now I'm not gonna say hey I'm not selling at all this alt season because I'm holding for long term I hold about 20% for long term after any sort of bull market I will sell 80% of my holdings and buy back lower at the end of the day because that's just how to really do it now of course yeah we got to see where things go because I'm predicting by the summer of 2022 uh, that's basically where our top will officially be it all depends on where Bitcoin like what happens with Bitcoin because if we see a, bar a parabolic rise where it's up a hundred percent fifty percent whatever the case may be then yeah I will probably sell that because you know what goes up must come down we already know the the saying and for me, you know, I definitely could see Bitcoin losing its number one spot. I could see Hedera definitely being in the top three. I said it's massively undervalued. You know, it's not even in the top, you know, 25, you know. And for its value to be under, you know, Safe Moon and assets like that, it's just, it's laughable, right? So, yeah, we really just got to watch PA play out. Uh, but I do know what I hold. Uh, if you guys do do your research on Hedera Hashgraph and, you know, if you follow people, you follow the right people, then you could definitely see the true value behind it. Uh, you know, I'm just not, I'm not too, you know, concerned with PA right now on Hedera, right? Uh, 22 cents, 20 cents, even down to 15 cents, I will continuously buy. Uh, if, if you guys are getting frustrated with Hedera, if you guys are getting frustrated with you know price action on it um hey it's totally okay if you guys do you, you know nobody's forcing you to hold this asset um but i can pretty much almost guarantee you that once you read you know the use case value behind it you do your research on it you know you're not going to think about selling you're not even going to question you know if this is going to go to a dollar plus or five dollars plus or anything you know at the end of the day because by 2025, I could see this being three digits because 
this is a massive project with a massive vision behind it as well. So I don't, I, I don't see us not going to a dollar plus uh, this bull run. But like I said, my targets are three to six, and then you know ten plus non-conservative. So, uh, but nonetheless, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on. Like I said, uh, if you guys do want more free content, you guys could join my Discord down in the description below for free. You guys could also follow me on Twitter at ncashofficial as well. But nonetheless, this has been Nick. I hope that you guys are having a beautiful day or a beautiful night wherever you guys are in this beautiful world. Peace out.